This is what a thousand hour project looks like in Blender, and this is what a tired artist looks like. A thousand hours is a long time to spend on one project. In fact, it's actually just over 40 days. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is actually part of my short film, which is a larger project coming soon. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of my learnings, tips, and tricks, including quickly creating detailed environment backgrounds with a variety of tools, converting any image you have into a PBR material, speeding up your viewport on slower PCs so that you can actually work on the tools and other tips I learned along the way. Stop. What would be your dream project if skill and time weren't the limit? Let me know in the comments below, and now let's continue on to the rest of the video. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA Studio. Having an NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics card gives creators access to the NVIDIA Studio platform, delivering massive performance boosts with RTX AI tools and over 100 creative apps like Blender and Adobe Creative Suite. So you dive in, you have these big plans, you're ready to go, and then you're overwhelmed by the massive environments you have to create. Well, here's one tip I did to make a lot more detailed environments in a lot less time. Now, when it comes to the foreground of your image, it's pretty easy to put some props up front and some objects in your character. It doesn't take a lot to fill out what's directly in front of the camera. But when it comes to the vast expanse of the background, that's where the real challenge arises. So what you're going to need is either a photograph or a painting, or if you use AI generation like Adobe's AI Firefly, you can go ahead and grab a generated image there as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use AI to add a depth map, and then we can use that to displace the object. Now, I prefer Adobe's Photoshop Neuro Filters. It has more features than other sets that I found, and I can go ahead and touch up the mask in Photoshop itself if I need. Now, if you don't have the Adobe Suite, then I can recommend this free software here, which I will also link to below, and this will create a depth map of your image, albeit with a lot less kind of control, but it'll get you where you need to be. After that, what you're gonna do is go ahead and import with the images as plain to add on, which is free in Blender. Bring in your image for the base color. Now bring in the displacement mag, plug it into a displacement node and plug that into the displacement socket. Now you're not going to see any results here because your plane won't have any geometry. So what we need to do is add an adaptive subdivision modifier. So go ahead, add a subdivision modifier and you should click the adaptive subdivision and simple. Now, if you don't see adaptive subdivision, you need to go to your GPU feature set and set that to experimental. Now, if you notice that my viewport's going incredibly fast, that's thanks to my NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 GPU. Now, I recommend any NVIDIA card for 3D, but the 4090 in particular is an absolute beast. I'm rendering my entire short film on this one card and don't even feel the need for a render farm. But let's dive back in and learn more. And the great thing about this is we get depth in our scene so we can do camera moves, lighting well affected, and we've kind of filled out the background of our scene very quickly. But wait, you finish the scene, you get this far, and then you kind of like fail on the project. Did you spend enough time in pre-production? Because that's probably why you're not completing your projects. You need to put in the work up front. I recommend spending about 20% of the time of your project on just planning out the project and preparing to get started, and you'll be much more likely to succeed in completing your project. Now, in the case of my project, I'm doing a short film that tells a story, so I need to go ahead and plan out the story. Now, for me, I'm a little too scatterbrained to sit down and just write everything out in Google Docs. So what I did is I used a previous sponsor's tool called Mila Note, which allowed me just to kind of type all my ideas out on these sticky notes, and then to start dragging and dropping and putting them back together until it could combine all my ideas into a coherent story. Now, pretty much any large project in Blender is going to require a shot list if you're going to be doing multiple cameras. So with the shot list, what I did is I went through and I actually just kind of planned out the entire movie in my head and wrote them down all in this giant list using Google Sheets, which is free. And I created this check mark system so that every time I check off a shot, I get to watch the progress bar go up and I get a little endorphin rush. Mm, progress. And after you've made that shot list, just take a brief brief moment to panic about how you made your project too big. Which brings me to my next point. Go back through and delete everything that you don't need. And then go back through and delete everything that you don't need again. Now you probably have a project that's manageable that you can actually create. So let's move forward. And it's around this time you should start seeking inspiration. I highly recommend mood boards and art boards because they can go ahead and help unblock creators block and also inspire you with some ideas to maybe think about approaching things a bit differently than you might've come up with on your own. Now where you get that inspiration is up to you. There's Instagram, 
Instagram, Pinterest, ArtStation, and much more. However, you can also check out AI image generation as a way to create more of a focused mood board based on the prompts that you input. For example, Adobe Firefly, which uses this video sponsor, NVIDIA Studio, GPUs in the cloud. Regardless of wherever you get your inspiration, I recommend downloading PureRef, dragging all of your images in there. You can normalize the size and automatically create a collage, which you can export as a PNG and pull into Blender as reference. You're ready to enter production and you're probably gonna start to panic because you realize you've bit off more than you can chew. So keep one word in mind, scalability. What that means is trying to eliminate steps in the process by using tools and other things within your pipeline. For example, asset packs are your best friend, materials, foliage, effects, lights. There's already packs out there of all this stuff already made that can help you speed up your process. I have several packs on Blender Market, including some free assets as well. Also consider tools outside of Blender that can speed up your Blender workflow. For example, I wanted to do a hand-painted texture look. So what I did is paint my textures and then drag them into Adobe Sampler's AI image to PBR material which is powered by NVIDIA Studio, and that would quickly generate a PBR material with a depth map, normal map, and roughness map. And then I could populate my scene with all these hand-painted textures that still had some detail in them. Now, a free alternative is Materializer, which is much more limited in its options, but it is free and can convert your images into PBR materials. Now, don't just dive in all excited and start creating your scene. Break it into parts. I recommend environments, props, and characters. You're essentially creating an asset library for your project. So by breaking it into digestible sections, one, it'll be easier to make each piece. And then later when you go to create multiple scenes, you can pull in an append or link from those files and build all of your scenes very quickly. Now, when it comes to your characters, think about how much time you can spend on animation or designing your characters. If you consider doing humanoid characters, you can use tools like Rococo AI Capture to animate much quicker. Or if you wanna do something more stylized, maybe consider making them simple like my characters so that they're easier to animate. Now for props, I recommend using asset packs for kind of your background props, but for your hero props, like the statue of my king character, I use a flow where I generally use a sculpt brush kit from Blender Market, and I create a low poly version with the quad remesher add-on. Then I use UV Pack Master for the UVs to pack them efficiently. Then I take it over to Substance Painter to bake my high poly sculpt and use smart materials to quickly create complex texture passes. Now Blender doesn't have smart materials baked in. This is something I hope they get in the future, but for the time being, Kaizen has free examples on how to create three various types of smart materials to add edgeware, grime, and other things to your materials quickly right in Blender. Now, environments are hard, especially if you're on a lower-end PC, and I used to work on a much lower-end PC when I started this project. Now I have the RTX 4090, so it's not much of an issue for me anymore, but I know what it's like to struggle and lag through your scene. Check out the Simplify option. Most people are aware of this option, but they're not using all the features it has, which is a shame. You can turn on subdivisions, volume, resolution and particles. And by turning these off, you can speed up your viewports. But most importantly, and most people don't do this, you can turn down the texture limit. So you can limit the texture sizes that appear in your viewport. Now this will only affect the render view, but it can drastically speed up your viewport by setting it to something super low, like 64 pixels. It's going to give you blurrier results, but it'll still give you a good idea what your scene will look like on final render. And as expected, you want to use geometry nodes because there's just a lot of tools in there to reduce the manual labor for kind of filling out a land landscape. I already have a couple tutorials on this on how to do grass blowing in the wind and also how to generate environments like this forest here. Now, I also want to recommend the NVIDIA Canvas tool with the 360 degree panorama feature. Now what this tool allows you to do is go ahead and just kind of paint your spherical map so you can create kind of any environment you want and get a lot of control here, especially great if you're doing realistic renders. Now this isn't a high bitrate map. So that means it won't work as an HDRI, but a trick you can do is you can pull it in so that you can use it as your background and for your reflections. You can connect it here with the light path node and plug in a free HDRI from HDRI Haven that looks kind of similar. And then you'll go ahead and get good lighting from this HDRI while maintaining the look of the custom map you made here. And now that you've created all these elements, you can go ahead and drag and drop them in your scenes and begin animating. Now, before you polish off your scenes or do your final renders, go ahead and block out phases off all those shots from your shot list and begin editing them together in a timeline. Rather than using final renders and burning a ton of time, go ahead and just use that viewport render with the materials on, and this will give you a pretty good representation of what your scene could look like. Now, if you're looking for an editor, I use Adobe Premiere, but of course, Blender has a free editor built in. But if you're looking for a free editor, I would recommend DaVinci Resolve. It is a compositor, color grading, and a great editor 
they're all built right in. Now you're ready to do the final render, but don't be discouraged because what's probably going to happen is you're going to render and then finish your render, realize you forgot to turn on one object, render again, celebrate, realize you made another mistake, cry, then get back together, render again. Now you are done with your render. Now most artists I know stop here, which is a big mistake because compositing is really where you can bring that extra layer of polish to your projects. Blender has a great compositing tool and it's even more powerful now that you can composite in real time in the viewport, which I have a tutorial covering that as well. I use After Effects because I go back and forth between AE and Premiere with their timeline comp feature. And I also use the tool Blender to AE, which sends over my camera and other effects so that I can access that data in After Effects. Now, if you're not already familiar, I recommend you check out tools like the NVIDIA Omniverse, which is a platform that enables individuals and teams to link creative apps to streamline creative processes. I'm always excited about the tools that they're adding. They're very artist friendly and kind of support me in my creative process to help me produce the images and the scenes that I want to as an independent creator effectively. So what does a thousand hour project look like? For me right now, it looks like about a little over halfway of a short film, but I am making progress very quickly and it is coming soon. So what projects are you planning on working on? Do you have a thousand hour project in the development? I'd like to hear about it in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content from me, I actually did a video for Adobe Max as well, where I go through some of my process with their tools as well. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll link it in the description below.